In this recording, we look at reading inverse T distribution tables to find the critical value of T for one-tailed hypothesis tests. We also have a separate recording on how to do this for two-tailed hypothesis tests, and if you're interested more in the step-by-step -step process for hypothesis tests such as t-tests, we also have separate recordings on that. But here let's focus on finding the critical value of t for a one-tailed test. And when we're conducting a t-test, the calculated value of the test statistic can be compared against a critical value, which is what we're going to look for now using a statistical table. And to make sure we choose the correct critical value of t, there are several things we need to consider. First of all, whether it is indeed a one-tailed hypothesis test, or whether it is two-tailed. We also need to consider the significance level alpha that we are testing at. We need to look at the sample size n, and if the t-test is one-tailed, as in these examples, we need to consider the direction of the alternative hypothesis, H1. And with a one-tailed test, H1 could have one of these forms. It might be that we're hypothesising that the mean mu is less than some number, or it might be that we're hypothesising that the mean mu is greater than some number. And we'll return to this shortly. But you should be aware that the presentation of inverse T distribution tables varies quite a lot. So the one we're going to show you here is just one example of such. Some such tables, for instance, present values that correspond to possible significance levels for one-tailed or two-tailed hypothesis tests in the top row, whereas others, such as the table we're about to look at, give us the cumulative distribution function f of t for the t distribution. So what does that represent? Well, the cumulative distribution function represents the area under the t distribution curve to the left of a required value t. And the t distribution is centred at zero. Obviously t can be positive or negative. Suppose t is over there, for instance, when it would be positive, then f of t for that value of t would represent the area that I've just shaded. The next thing to note is the values in the first column of the table I'm about to show you are the degrees of freedom u, which is the sample size minus 1, and the numbers in the main body of the table then give values of t. So this is not a complete inverse t distribution table. I've just shown you the first 10 rows of the main body of that so that you can get an idea how this is set out. But how do we actually use such a table to find t? And the first step is the required value of the cumulative distribution f of x is 1 minus the significance level alpha that we are testing at. The second step is that in the first column, as I mentioned before, the degrees of freedom are equal to our sample size minus 1. So working out those two things then gives us a value of t in the table. But it's important to be aware that that number in the table simply gives the magnitude of t, whereas in actual fact, t could be positive or negative. Therefore, the final thing we need to decide is whether our critical value of t is positive or negative. And if the alternative hypothesis had the form mu greater than mu naught, it will be positive, whereas if the alternative hypothesis is of the form mu less than some number mu naught, the critical value of t will be negative. So let's have a look at how this works in practice with an example. So suppose we were conducting a one-tailed hypothesis test at the 5% significance level, where the alternative hypothesis was that mu is less than 8.4, and where the size of the sample we were working with was 15. Now obviously in practice if we did such a test we'd have other details too such as the actual mean and standard deviation of the sample or at least data so that we could calculate that and a specific question we were addressing. But this information here is the key information we would need to find the critical value of t. So let's have a look at how we proceed in this case. And again here we just show part of the table. 
Now the first step when we look at it is to find f of t which sometimes as in this table will be referred to as f of x and we said that that was equal to 1 minus the significance level alpha. So let's look at our information again here we're told to test at the 5% significance level so alpha equals 0.05 therefore right away we can see that f of t is 1 minus 0.05 which is going to give us 0.95 so right away then we know that this will be the column that we're going to be looking at the next thing we require is the degrees of freedom and the degrees of freedom in this case is going to be as usual sample size minus 1 so here 15 items in our sample so the degrees of freedom will be 14 so right away that then allows us to look in the appropriate part of the table to find t so go down the 0.95 column for f of x or f of t really in this case go to the row for 14 degrees of freedom and we find a value of t in the body of the table here that is the magnitude of our critical value of t is 1.761 so that is the magnitude of t but is it going to be positive or negative in this case and the form of h1 was mu less than some number the 8.4 isn't going to affect the calculation of the actual critical value of t here so it's mainly the fact that it's mu less than some number that we're looking at at the moment that means t critical is going to be a negative number that is t or critical value of t is also sometimes written t crit is going to be negative 1.761 in this case so that's an example showing how we can use this type of table to find a critical value of t but just reiterating this will only work if it is a one-tailed t-test see our other recording for an example of how to do this when the test is two-tailed